This is our Forex blog for July 1st, 2011. And like most days, you really want to focus on buying the strongest pairs and selling the weakest ones. You can see both the dollar and the yen uh, have a, a downtrend in the daily, weekly, monthly trend. And the real-time trend was down, up for two hours, down. Uh, the yen also weak. But the most consistent weak one today was the Swiss. Uh, and it also has one of the weakest weekly trends. And, you know, some of the stronger ones today were the Euro, the Australian, um, the pound for you know most of the day uh, although this longer term trends down and then the CAD. Your, your best bet is to buy one that has real-time strength, the longer term strength against one that has real-time weakness and longer term weakness. So buying the Euro Swiss uh, pretty much a no-brainer. You can also go light uh, and you know less aggressive in buying the pound Swiss, uh, the CAD Swiss and also the Australian Swiss. Let's look at the uh, Euro Swiss first, then we'll do the uh, CAD Swiss. Here's the Euro Swiss. Notice the explosive move in this yesterday. Usually trends like that uh, get some kind of a pullback, and when they don't, you know you have a very mild pullback here, and then it went sideways for uh, about seven or eight hours or more. When it breaks out again, it's a very high probability trade. This was a great trade. Uh, and you can use our trailing stop and it would have got you out somewhere up in here. Um, also, usually when currencies are above the upper containment band, uh, they rarely go beyond uh, the FIB target. So you can draw the FIBs on the first wave and look to get out between the first and second FIB target. Usually that's going to you know, give you uh, a bigger profit. It is risky to buy above the upper containment band. So if you do and the market's kind of going sideways, you, know, you might look to get out. Uh, if you bought this first pullback after the strong trend, usually after a strong trend, the first pullback is likely to work. Um, and you can see if you bought as it started to go up right here, the trailing stop got you out up here uh, at around 88. You're probably long at 55 for another 30 pips. Once the currency, you know, explodes up and it's way above the upper containment band and it fails to make a higher high, it, it's likely to get a pullback. And usually the pullback is either to come some kind of support area and oftentimes it's the hourly moving average all the way down here. Uh, so at this point, you don't know that the market's not going to go down uh, anymore. It goes up, doesn't make a higher high. At that point, it's safe to assume the market might uh, break the support of the previous day's high and come down and test the next area, which is the hourly. When it fails to do so, this is a pretty high probability trade. You have a double bottom uh, after an explosive move up. It barely pulled back probably no more than the 38% fib of that of that move up. Let's draw your fibs on the entire wave. And it you know pretty much found support at the 50%. It's it's a slightly lower low. It, it's hard to see it on the chart, but you can see with the fibs on here hit the 50% uh, level after initially finding support at the 38%. Uh, and the 50% is the highest probability uh, place to buy in my opinion. Because you can always get back in and get into 62 and if it breaks out the trends over but if you get in and then a little bit more here and it shoots up, you have a very big profit most of the time. So double bottom right here, this is a high probability trade. You didn't know that this was going to hold support or not, uh, but the fact that it held the 15 really didn't go much lower. Very high probability and you're out you know, up here. Uh, most people are going to look at the previous uh, swing high right here. That's a very high probability place to get out. It went a few pips beyond that. CAD Swiss, also a uh, high probability one to buy. Uh, this one also kind of went sideways today, starting it off, broke out, didn't go up nearly as much as a euro from 45 to 65. Um, and then again, the first pullback is usually a good trade. You might have bought here and got out near the upper containment band. And again, later, when it failed to you know, pull back and did a little double bottom right here, you might have either bought the high or if you're a little bit more aggressive, um, you know, this was going sideways for four hours uh, in here and out at the upper band. I mean, uh, when the stock got hit 35. So whether you bought it here at 93, you know, you made well over 30 pips in that trade. Uh, the Australian also uh, moderately strong today and the longer term trend is up. So you can buy the Australian versus the Swiss. This one, you know, is kind of going sideways, pulled back, found support at the hourly. You don't know if it's going to go up. And when it breaks back above the previous week's high right here, pretty high probability place to get in. The next resistance area is 20 pips away, uh, and you know if you would have got out there, that's about the same as where the trailing stop got you out. Um, it was extremely strong at that point, so you might have bought this breakout right here, and that 
you know, the market's up so much that it's, you know, starting to run into some resistance. Uh, after not making a higher high for a few hours, it's pretty safe to assume it's going to pull back. Um, you know, but when, same pattern here, double bottoms, barely makes a lower low than before, uh, high probability place to go long, and using a real-time tool, as you can see, incredible strength all day, a little bit of weakness here, then the weakness disappears, and it never really went below the low, so you're in, and the trailing stop, you know, it appears, uh, uh, got you out right here, somewhere around 29, so you're in this breakout trade here at uh, 9063. So that's about a 40 or 50 pip uh, trend in that case. Let's just go over some of our other uh, currencies. We know that the euro dollar was up, I believe, four days in a row. So today would be the fifth. So if you see it going up, hitting the upper containment band, running out of steam, it's a pretty safe counter trend trade up here after being up four days. Especially, you know, when the market's super strong, you don't want to short it. But once that strength runs out right here, at this point, you know, um, the trailing stop get hit. You could go short right here. You have a small 15 pip profit there, short here, another small profit, short here, small profit, short here, small profit. Uh, pretty much selling every time the trailing stop got hit worked, except for right here, which, you know, it, it was very strong and all of a sudden uh, became weak and the trailing stop was pretty significantly far away from the high here. So, you know, I usually don't like to sell more than 10 pips off the high. Like this one right here is a much higher probability than, you know, this one here. The trailing stop was wide because it was strong and all of a sudden went short really fast and you know tagged the stop. Uh, the trailing stop is much more accurate when you know the market's going up, the strength kind of resides a little bit, the market goes sideways, breaks it, a very high probability trade. Uh, before that, another high probability trade because the trend was up, it's not likely to go above our upper containment bands today after being up four days straight, but this narrow range breakout pattern right here, it's kind of hovering right underneath the hourly it's the smallest volatility over the previous seven four hour bars even you know this works uh, on a five minute chart but we're using four hour data so this was a pretty high probability trade and it looks like it generated uh, you know 15 pips or so let's look at some of the other currencies for high probability trades uh, pound dollar was in a downtrend so when it broke the near uh, actually found support at the 200 day moving average very key level support when that got broken that was a pretty high probability trade um, you know this one uh, had quite a bit of strength right here going sideways broke out above the hourly that's a pretty high probability trade notice our trailing stop got you all out all the way up here um, I'm not sure if I would have necessarily sold that but once it kind of came down and you can see mostly weakness here uh, the trend was down in the pound dollar obviously this was a, obviously a news release uh, type trade um, and the trailing stops work extremely well with the news uh, trades because usually markets move too far uh, statistically during uh, news and so you know we tighten the stop dramatically uh, and it caught you know the vast majority of that move. Buying double bottoms uh, at the lower containment bands is usually a pretty high probability trade in this case you know it didn't generate more than about 10 pips you have a sideways consolidation here it failed to go lower this breakout trade right here uh, went up 10, 20, 30, 40 or so pips. Notice we got you out of that um, uh, that breakout trade right here. The trailing stop was right up here uh, at 76. Just a few measly pips, less than 10 pips off the high. It, you know, as soon as that strength uh, kind of subsided a little bit, or I, in this case, I think it went statistically too far, we yanked the stop up. Uh, Fibonacci areas I draw on the charts each night so you don't have to when you have one of those gray fib levels outside of our upper containment bands usually that's a very high probability reversal area uh, so that's a con uh, phenomenal counter trend trade you also have uh, the fib area of this first wave up which also happens to be right near the 1.618 here it did go about 10 pips beyond that so you have an intraday uh, Fibonacci profit target level combined with one of my longer term ones that I do each night so you don't have to, uh, that's a pretty high probability trade. Normally buying a breakout of an NR pattern is high probability, but in this case you got lots of resistance above it. You got weekly pivot level, Fibonacci retracement level, uh, it's not likely to break through there. But once a resistance area does get broken through, it does become a pretty high probability place to buy. We know that the Swiss was one of the weakest ones today, so if you wanted to buy this pullback here, you made a little bit, uh, it pulled back again here, 
you bought here, you made a little bit. Uh, and then when it finally broke out over the highs, uh, you know, went right to this area and you made um, 40 pips or so. Using the currency meter, you know, when the dollar was strong and the Swiss was weak, uh, you had uh, upward thrust in this. Dollar CAD underneath the hourly here. So anytime a currency that's in a downtrend comes back up to the hourly, usually the first time that's a great place to go short. Uh, you might have only made, uh, well, you didn't make much at all on that, in, in fact. Uh, but once the currency is not going lower and it does break above the hourly, you know, um, this one has an extremely weak downtrend. So you got to be really careful doing counter trend trades, buying when the currency is this weak. But when the currency is coming up to the hourly and they're selling and it finally it just keeps trying to push up, finally breaks, it's a pretty high probability trade. Even though it went 10 pips, you might have got stopped out with a few pip loss. Uh, you know, obviously before uh, a news event happened that, that made this go back into the direction of the longer term trend. Anytime you see a huge move, the first pullback trade is usually very high probability. If you shorted right here at 96.20, uh, you know, you're still in that trade actually. You haven't got stopped out yet, um, but you're already up 10 pips. You've locked in 10 pips on that one. Australian dollar, the longer term trends up, so, you know, um, but it was been up so much. Uh, if you want to look for buys when you know the longer term trend is up, you can always find a decent size 30 plus pip down move. Draw your fibs on there and usually the fib targets are pretty high probability places to buy. Um, you can see also not a lot of extreme weakness here. So when it broke out right here, notice this kept you in this for about a 40 pip move. And you can see on previous swings down, if you draw your fibs on them, Usually the FIB targets are good places to buy when the longer term trends up. And you can see that almost to the pip exploded up today. It went slightly below there. As soon as it started going back up, you buy, uh, exploded up. A lot of different ways to trade, um, you know, using uh, our tools. You know, the euro had some strength. The yen, uh, looking at the currency meter, you know, the longer term trend was down. So obviously buying a strong euro versus a weak yen. Uh, like here you had some strength, intense strength, a lot of weakness, and then very little strength. The longer term trends down, so it's very safe to assume coming on to 9.30 that the, you know, the yen's weakness will resume, and it did at 9.30. Uh, at 9.30, which one would you want to trade it against? Um, yeah, at 9.30, the CAD was already uh, strong, and it was one of the strongest longer term currencies. So 9.30, you know, using the currency meter is a no-brainer CAD yen. You look at this trade here at the 930. Uh, at 9.30, you saw the yen was very likely to go weak again. The CAD was one of the strongest currencies. It spent most of the morning in a very tight range, which means it's likely to explode. And so here's 9.30. Uh, and even if you didn't want to buy this breakout here, when it finally went above uh, the previous high of the day, right here, you're in. And notice, you know, very quick 40 pips. Uh, let's look at the currency meter again. Um, this is one of the things that I do, try to spot potential reversals. If the longer term trend is clearly down in this, and it's very choppy today, but you got weakness, strength, weakness, strength, weakness, you know, right here, the lack of strength, it's very safe to assume going on 6, the yen would resume its, its downtrend. So at 6, what was one of the stronger currencies? It wasn't the CAD at that point. Um, you know, conceivably, throughout the day beforehand, the euro was the strongest. So at 6, the euro yen made sense to, you know, look for buys. Here's 6 o'clock, and you can see if you bought this breakout right here. Obviously, nothing works 100% of the time. This one, you know, went up a little bit and then came back down. You would have got stopped out with a tiny loss. So, you know, you lose 5, 6, 7 pips, 10 pips sometimes when you're wrong, and oftentimes, you know, catch 30 to 50 and sometimes 100 pip moves when you're right. You know, because at 6 o'clock, um, this one did go weak for about just an hour. But, you know, the, the euro lot quickly lost its uh, strength and went weak all of a sudden. Uh, the Australian was also uh, mildly strong, not obscenely. It wasn't over the 80 level, but the Australian yen going on 6 probably would have been a better bet. Uh, here's 6 o'clock. Actually, this one also never really broke out over the high, so you didn't have a trade. Uh, but when the yen did go super weak later, this was one of the stronger pairs too, and it also exploded up you know, 40, 50 pips.